All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're going to be talking about fluoroscopy. This is our introduction to fluoroscopy. What are the types of applications that you want to do in fluoroscopy? How does the system work at a high level as far as the components? Now at How Radiology Works. Fluoroscopy is just about making movies of x-rays. So typically there's either diagnostic or interventional guidance. And the idea is that there's some things in the body that are going to be moving and fluoroscopy is a way that you can take images of that over time and make a movie. Then when that movie is read out, it can be reviewed by the radiologist and the diagnostic decisions can be made. There's also interventional guidance. So fluoroscopy can be used with low dose settings such that it's kind of like a real time movie. So when someone says we're gonna fluoro now, usually what they're talking about is we're gonna actually turn on a relatively low dose x-ray and that's gonna be used to guide, for instance, catheters through the body. But first off, let's talk about some of the diagnostic x-ray procedures that are gonna be done under fluoroscopy. And this is again from head to toe. Not completely inclusive, but does give you a good idea of some of the procedures that can be done under fluoroscopy. So a myelogram is the idea of injecting contrast into the cerebral spinal fluid in the spine and in that way you're going to be able to visualize details in the spine even better than you could if you're just looking at the contrast natively of the cerebral spinal fluid Some of these procedures have been supplanted over time by ct because ct actually has the ability to make three-dimensional images and to image low contrast things better than just traditional x-ray imaging. The contrast injection is still gonna be done under x-ray guidance, even if you're gonna to go to CT to do the actual diagnostic imaging. Then the barium swallow is another type of diagnostic exam where barium is actually gonna absorb more x-rays than the rest of the parts of the body around it. So it's gonna actually make for good contrast as you swallow it and then you're going to be actually imaging the upper portion of the GI tract. Then angiography, that's something where you're typically going to be injecting an iodinated contrast agent again so that the vessels will show up relatively bright. You'll be able to image those vessels and the contrast actually flowing through those vessels. Then a barium enema can be used to look at the lower end of the digestive tract. So the colon, for instance, can be well visualized with uh, barium. You can also image for the reproductive system within females. You can look for cysts in the urinary tract as well. So these are all examples of diagnostic fluoroscopy in use. Give you just a few examples here. Again, how fluoroscopy is used interventionally. A significant one is for stent placement. So if you're looking at placing stents in vessels, you know, outside of the heart, and then also we'll talk about in the heart. Again, we call this percutaneous is where you're actually going in through the skin. So in that case, you're not actually doing, for instance, open heart surgery in what's called cabbage. In that scenario, you're actually going to take another vessel and you're going to sew it in in place of the vessel that has a significant blockage. And the scenario where you're doing it percutaneously, you're going in through the skin and you're going to basically weave a catheter up through the body, then do your intervention, such as putting in a stent to open up the coronary. There's significant faster recovery time from percutaneous interventions. And this is because you're not having this invasive action of breaking open the chest in order to get in and make your cardiac intervention. So sometimes the heart is not actually beating in a nice rhythmic way, but there's actually dysfunction and beats can be skipped and so on. And in this scenario, you can actually ablate or burn some of the tissue that is actually causing some of these issues. That's what's called ablation. You can inject actually a mixture into the joints. For instance, if you have arthritis 
to actually um, reduce the pain. For instance, steroids as being part of the injection. So these are just some of the things that you would wanna do under fluoroscopic guidance, wherein you're gonna be able to see over time, uh, basically a movie of either the contrast agent or the stent going in and being placed. Parts of the fluoroscopic system, we're gonna need to generate x-rays. Those x-rays are gonna pass through our body and then we're gonna make an image of those on what we call the image receptor. So first off, the thing that generates x-rays we've talked about before on this channel a lot is called the x-ray tube. Check out our video on x-ray generation and on x-ray tubes. And then the x-rays are then gonna pass through First, a set of filter, and those are filters on these systems that you can actually move in and out, essentially to tailor the X-ray flux throughout the field of view. And then there's gonna be a collimator, which is gonna actually block down and make sure that you're not irradiating more than the region that you'd like to show on the image receptor. The X-rays will then pass through the body. They'll then pass through an anti-scatter grid, if you have an anti-scatter grid on your system to try and reduce the influence of scatter. And then you have a flat panel detector, which is kind of the state of the art. So most of the systems nowadays are using flat panel detectors. So it looks like in person, if you're actually looking at a percutaneous procedure here, and then you can see that there is an imaging system that's gonna be used uh, in this interventional suite and at a high level again there's a number of components you can see the significantly important ones that we just talked about are actually the x-rays that are going to be generated and we're going to be making a movie of those x-rays over time but there's actually important pieces from the control standpoint so you can think about the system control which is again controlled by a computer the interventionalist so either the technologist or an interventional radiologist is going to be in here and even others are trained nowadays to use these systems so traditionally the procedures first get done by radiologists but then others can learn how to do them as well and um, you're seeing the images on the display right in front and the um, interventionalist is going to have to know kind of the background or the patient details are gonna get those ahead of time. And then like we talked about, you have your image chain there. Some of the other features that are present are a dose rate control, and there's also gonna be a display of the dose for the user. You can actually start and stop the x-rays with a foot pedal. So as the interventionalist is watching, they can perform some of the procedure under guidance, and then they can stop and they can rewatch and then they can take a diagnostic loop and they can keep doing that as they're performing the procedure. Some of the other parts is you have an X-ray generator, which the system control is gonna actually turn the generator on when the X-ray tube needs to be powered on. You also have a gantry, which is gonna be able to typically perform significant motions. And in the case of the interventional suite, a lot of times they're in what we call a C-arm, the patient's in there, and then there's a C-arm that can move about the patient such that the interventionalist can get in and do their work without being blocked by the actual x-ray system itself. There's also a significant amount of post-processing which is gonna happen to the images after they're taken from the image receptor before they're going to be displayed for the user on the screen. So there's an image processing unit which is again happening you know, within a computer. Finally, there's some hand controls I wanted to mention. Just like we have foot controls, there's also hand controls that can control the movement of the table and the movement of the gantry itself. This is how fluoroscopy works. Again, there's lots of different procedures, but just at a high level, what I want you to know is you're making a movie and it's 2D imaging, and it's used for both diagnostic and interventional guidance. And we're gonna talk more about those flat panel systems as well as what we call image intensifiers, which had been the state of the art previously before the flat panel systems took over. So we're gonna be comparing those in future videos. Let me know if that's something you're interested 
down in the comments below. And for now, check out our video on computed radiography versus digital radiography. That's a very interesting part of the 2D x-ray imaging as well.